Kia ora koutou and welcome to Markets, Mystics and Mayhem, a weekly podcast with Kiwi Bank's economics team alongside the occasional special guest. We'll delve into the data, decipher policy decisions, monitor the markets and analyse the issues impacting the Kiwi economy. Let's get into it. Well, hey guys, this is really exciting. It's our first episode of Markets, Mystics and Mayhem. Today's episode is going to be all about central banks and what they're doing offshore, with a focus on the Fed and what that means for New Zealand. We'll discuss the RBNZ's recent decision and the likely path ahead. We know rate cuts are coming thick and fast. And we're also going to hear from Jared, our chief economist, and his travels around the country. You've been gone for quite a while, so I hope you've got some good stories for us. But overall, what we're hearing is that the discussion among our clients is much more upbeat and constructive. It's definitely a story of optimism. But first off, let's start with the Fed and what's been happening in the US over the weekend. Yeah, well, the US actually has been incredibly fascinating. The US economy has been incredibly fascinating to watch over the last four years because they have been able to get inflation down from something north of 9% down to a low 3% without recording a recession, without a significant deterioration in the labour market, um, there are some growing risks, though. So unemployment is starting to climb, and we saw that in the payrolls data over the weekend. So in August, there are far fewer jobs um, created over the month, um, and unemployment is continuing to to track higher. So there are some risks there, but it does, you know, this whole soft landing narrative that we're hearing a lot in markets, it looks like the US might actually be able to achieve that. Yeah, I mean, the markets have been... Uh, interesting to put it politely over the last six or so months and looking at the the US economy I think outperforming many um, it has been a a, a so-called soft landing um, with risks of something harder Um, but it's not just the Fed you know we agonize over the Fed but I think it's you know other central banks are moving and moving quickly. Yeah the Bank of Canada moved last week as well as early delivering their third rate cut in a row. Um, ECB meets this week. Um, They look like they'll resume cutting rates as well. So we are seeing the sort of, I'd say, herd of central banks moving in one direction. We're back to that sort of synchronized global monetary policy again. We sort of way up and we're kind of seeing that pivot back down again. Yeah, I mean, and we came out of COVID. We overstimulated. Uh, That caused quite a spike in demand at a time when supply couldn't keep up. So we got this massive surge and inflation and central banks were forced to react. They were forced to tighten. They tightened quite aggressively. Um, and I think now that war on inflation has been won. I think we can say past tense, you know, inflation uh, has been beaten back down towards 2%. And that herd of central banks is now turning south. Um, and we're getting some cuts. Yeah. It's taken a while though, and it's taken quite a lot of pain. I mean, you'd have to look at the Kiwi economy and see just the amount of dips and recessions that we've been in. Um, It's taken a while for the Reserve Bank to sort of catch on, but we're finally sort of at the rate-cutting cycle. But going back to the Fed and the US, they haven't really recorded a recession yet, Um, but the all talks are that they actually are going to go in September, which is just sort of next week. What's going to happen there, though? Are they, they haven't had the same kind of weakness um, that we have here. We've only seen the Reserve Bank cut by 25 basis points. And doesn't seem like everyone's convinced that maybe the Fed's going to go 25, 50 basis points. What are we thinking? I think I think everyone's just a bit confused whether they go 25 base points as their first cut to kick off the cutting cycle or they go 50. Um, leading into the payrolls print, it was it was sort of anticipated to be at this really make, sort of make it or break it number. If it came up really soft, then that would just make 50 base points. Yeah. You know, the, the cakes were very strong. But it was a very mixed read, that jobs report. So again, I think we're still in a state of confusion. Markets still don't know exactly what they want to do, what what they're picking, whether it's a 25 or 50. I think going 25 is probably their safest bet because they don't have a recession just yet, but they can kind of still stave off that, that growing risk in employment. But 25 seems like a good case to go by. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. From my point of view... I think maybe the US have had all this talk of like a soft landing and they're going to get it. So now anytime they're sort of seeing a bit of weaker data, they might be sort of panicking and thinking, okay, we we got to go. we got to go now. Maybe from our point of view, because we're here in New Zealand and we've just had like wave and wave and wave of like kind of depressing data. It's not quite the same. So in my point of view, I think a 25 basis point cut is probably what what's likely and what they should do. 
Yeah, I mean, we had similar discussions here uh, leading into the Reserve Banks of New Zealand's cut, you know, a few weeks ago. But for me, it doesn't matter. I couldn't care less whether they deliver 25 or 50 for their first move. I mean, the markets, they love that. They love trading it. They love taking punts on meeting by meeting. But for businesses, households, who cares if they do 25 or 50? It's about, you know, cutting and, and how far do they go? You know, from my point of view, it's the magnitude that matters most. Um, and you're going to see a Fed cutting, you know, I think all the way down to 3% and, and below. We've got a Reserve Bank in New Zealand doing the same thing. You know, we were at 5.5% three weeks ago. Now we're at uh, uh, five and a quarter. Our forecast is that we go all the way to, to two and a half. And, and that's the story that, you know, we've been telling clients and, and businesses. It's that magnitude. It's, there's a lot of rate cuts coming. And there's a lot of relief for businesses and households coming. And do you think they're starting to realise that? I mean, you've been around up and down all over the North and South Island recently. Like, are they sort of catching on now? They are. They are. I've, I've been, you know, travelling, like you say, for the last three weeks. I've been in uh, six or seven cities and done you know, over a dozen uh, presentations. And, and um, the feedback ha has shifted a lot. So if I'd given a presentation, you know, five weeks ago, clients would come up afterwards and say, you know, thanks for that. It's nice to have an optimistic view. It's nice to be focusing on next year and, and beyond. But, and here's my problems. You know, I've got cost pressure. I, I, I don't know what's happening uh, with my customer base. I've got all these problems. Whereas over the last three weeks, just since the last rate cut, that discussion shifted. It's been, yeah, thanks for the optimistic presentation. I get it. Uh, I know interest rates are falling and I can actually see, you know, things getting better. Um, so businesses have gone from being, you know, quite, you know, laser focused, you know, tunnel vision on all their problems. But just in the last three weeks, they've lifted their heads and it's like, yeah, I get it. 25. Yeah, it's going to be a better year. Let's, you know, let's get a little bit excited. And is that across industries? When you say with the people that you are, the clients we're meeting, it's that across industries, all this optimism. It is. It's pretty, pretty widespread. Um, you know, I think retailers and and tourist uh, operators are a little more cautious, mm -hmm. and a little more. This is going to take too much, take a lot of time. Whereas people in the sort of more the housing and and manufacturing and that, they're they're just straight up. This is good, you know, and I've I've seen a rate cut. We're not we're not talking theoretically about you know interest rates falling. They have it's concrete. It's in front of me. I can feel it. Um, so I think we've seen a, a massive bounce in, in confidence. It'll probably do this for a while, but you know, we're in a better in a better headspace. Yeah, I am liking how yes, confidence is lifted, but also those activity indicators is going expectations for activity is also lifted as well it's not just the sentiment but it's also what they're planning for this time next year things are a much you know much brighter place for them which is good that rate relief is needed and i might be being a bit of a debbie downer now but do you think well you know i've got to be like the devil's advocate you know we did see those confidence numbers that you're talking about i mean for good reason and yeah they sh they should have lifted um off the back of that rate cut but do you think it's just a bit of sort of pent up excitement that the Reserve Bank has finally sort of, you know, pulled the trigger? Um, are we probably likely to see a bit of, you know, we still have, uh, you know, a lot of high interest rate sort of environment. We've only cut to 525 and yes, we expect rates to go lower, um, but for some time rates are going to be quite restrictive. So do you think that maybe they're just getting, that we're going to see maybe a pullback, maybe they're getting a bit too excited, you know? Well, it's interesting. We saw a bit of excitement after the um, election, yeah. which wasn't that long ago. Change in government. Obviously, businesses were pretty keen for a fresh uh, government to come in and, and mix things up. So we saw a big spike in, in confidence then. But to your point, mm. it just dissolved, didn't it? It just dropped away so quickly. It didn't last at all. So I think this initial spike that we've seen, you know, might do the same thing over the rest of the year. But... I think we'll we'll sort of find ourselves slowly grinding higher um, as these rate cuts feed through. 
um, you know, the one point I'd make is that you cut a rate today and historically it takes 18 months to feed through the economy. It's a really long time. Uh, most of our customers and, and mortgages uh, are taking shorter six-month rates, so that means that should be faster, but it's still, it's still a long lag. So, JK, going back to your travels, um, one thing I'm really interested in is have you heard anything to do with the construction industry? Because we've just had some data come out sort of over the last week about how consents is still sort of plummeting and not doing what we want them to do. Any hope there? Any good news? I think there's hope that, you know, interest rates have been cut, sure. But uh, when I do speak to developers, they're still concerned that it's it's hard to get things done when you when you just can't get the pre-sales. Um, the housing market's still very very soft um, developers just aren't you know turned on at the moment they just don't have uh, I think a willingness to take risk uh, right now so I think it's still you know quite depressed and it'll take some time to to turn around and um, yeah if our forecasts are right on housing it will but like you know when is that gonna take place yeah I think 2025 will be a better year for the housing market because we had these rate cuts um coming through now um yeah the construction industry's been very weak partly because of the financial conditions still being quite tight but also there's just no appetite to build because there's just been such a weak housing market it hasn't performed nearly as strongly as we expected at the beginning of this year but hopefully that turnaround does come um going into next year it should be a much brighter story I think come spring we'll see a bit more activity um, start to pick up. Yeah, I, I think it'll be led by uh, the investor. So investors have been hammered. They've been hammered by policymakers, um, whether it's LVR restrictions, you know, removal of interest deductibility, bright line tests, triple CFA. I mean, the list is really long, um, but it is turning around. And, and I think investors will be attracted to a market where the rental yields are picking up. Rents are rising at, at quite a high clip. Um, House prices are declining; they'll be attracted back into the market, and I think you know they'll lead the lead the return. Um, but sort of bringing you know there's a housing market, but then bringing it back to financial markets, which is a lot more fun. Um, there's been some mayhem in markets, and you know we love it to be honest. But uh, rates rates have just rallied hard um, in the last uh, month or so, so the the two-year swap rate, uh, which we use to price our mortgages, um, has dropped from 520 to 377. Well, that's a massive move in interest rates. I mean, we even had hedge funds coming in here, taking large bets, punting. Um, we saw a lot of action in a very short space of time, and you know those rates markets have repriced lower. Um, and more more importantly, for many importers and exporters. You know, what has happened to the Kiwi? Yeah, so the Kiwi in sort of recent weeks has had quite a bit of a surge upwards. Um, just as, you know, as we talked about at the beginning with the Fed sort of nearing their rate cutting cycle, um, there's been quite a bit of US dollar weakness. So we've seen the Kiwi sort of sitting somewhere in the 62s. I think they're it's a little bit lower now, but it's hard to think that once upon a time, you know, we saw the Kiwi sort of hitting at around 55 cents. Now our forecast is to hit 57 year end, but I think, even that, we're starting to, you know, maybe have to reevaluate. But you got that wrong. <laughs> to know, maybe the financial maybe markets team. Shut fair <laughs> Blame it on them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good and bad news, I guess, for the importers. It's great news, you know, they get their products a lot cheaper. Um, it sort of puts some more downside risk to our imported inflation. But then, um, I guess, yeah, I think I think it's still still sort of a story in the making. Yeah, I mean, you know. The currency in a small open economy like ours is so important, um, and you know it's it's lifted. Great, that puts downward pressure on inflation. That helps our exporters. Sorry, our importers. Um, but you know we want it to head south, mm. and we think it should by the end of the year to help out. Um, agri space it, needs it, right? Yeah, agri needs it big time. Yeah, particularly if commodity prices you know soften, we want that currency offset. But yeah, I guess it's an interesting time as it always is in in economics and financial markets. We're seeing some diverging economies, but central banks are all moving together and we're seeing starting to see that um play out there in the rate space and currency as well. So there's lots to watch um and to keep an eye on. But uh 
the main message really, at least here domestically, is that things are getting better. The outlook for next year is getting better um, as this rate relief continues to come through. So uh, that's it from us this week. And we'll be back next week with more economic insights and analysis. You've been tuned into This is Kiwi Economics, Markets, Mystics and Mayhem. We'll be back next week for more analysis and insights.